Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to solve trig ratios by means of Pythagoras. So let us look at the following example. It says solve the following ratio by using the diagram below. When they are doing these kind of questions, you will notice that the theta that is in the diagram is the same one that is in the question. Now when you start with these questions, they will specifically say you may not use a calculator, which means that you cannot link theta because your calculator usually works with a value linked to theta. But when they say you may not use a calculator, number one, your aim is to get x, y, and r. Now how you do that is by using Pythagoras. So we use Pythagoras. to get our unknown. If you look at the question, you're going to see that I have x and I have y. So by simply substituting, I can get my x, y, and r. Now look, I had put the minus in a bracket. If you are not careful and you just press into your calculator minus 6 squared, you're going to end up with minus 36, which is incorrect. The correct value is 36 plus 64, which is equal to r squared. 100 is equal to r squared. r is equal to 10. Now, in our previous videos, we had discussed that r is always positive. So, my aim is to get x, y, and r. I have x as minus 6. I have y as 8. And I have r as 10. Once you get x, y, and r by using your Pythagoras, then you are going to simply substitute. Now, at this point, these are the basic steps you need. But you will see that as we're doing more sums, there will be one more rule that I will put between these two steps. So be wary, don't just simply go. Remember, there's going to be one more step that is going to come into that method. Now, let's substitute. The question was, what is the value of sin theta plus cos theta? Sin, we know as y over r and cos we know it as x over r. Now we go to our values. You can even put it in the diagram. So you can go to the diagram or if you retain it on the side and we substitute y is 8, r is 10 plus x is minus 6, r is 10 giving us 2 over 10 simplified 1 over 5. And that is the value of sin theta plus cos theta. What is the value of cosec theta? Cosec theta is r over y. r is 10. y is 8, which means our final answer is one and one over four. So all we're doing, once we get x, y, and r, all we're doing is substituting. Okay, let us look at the following question. Now, in this question, they are intentionally not clearly giving you the x, y, and r as they had if they gave you a diagram. But what you do have to know is that your x, y, and r are in all your trig ratios. You see, all your trig ratios can be brought down to x, y's, and r's. So if I were to give you sin theta is equal to minus 4 over 5, 
what I had done was I had divided by 5. But at the same time, I have now created a ratio. I've created a fraction. Now, sin theta is going to be y over r. So I have now linked the y to minus 4, and I can link the r to 5. So we know from our previous knowledge that our whole aim is to get x, y, and r, and then we use Pythagoras. Now, when it's not clearly spelled out, we use our ratios to get our x, y, and r. So now we know y is equal to minus 4. R is equal to 5. We can use Pythagoras to solve for x. So we have x squared Right, when we're using Pythagoras, you should be familiar with Pythagoras, but I am emphasizing again that this must be in brackets so you get a positive value. That is one of the most common errors that we have. x squared plus y squared gives us a positive 16. So once we have this, we have that x is equal to plus or minus 3. Now this is where it becomes different from your normal Cartesian plane. From your Cartesian plane, you would always be able to see where does it lie. So is it positive or is it negative? Now, when I showed you in the Cartesian plane, okay, it was on a positive x, it was on a positive y, or it was a negative x and a negative y, you could see it from your Cartesian plane, how you got your signs. Now, when we're doing these ratios, number one, you must get your ratio alone. So you can see I had used methods of solving for an unknown by getting my sin alone. So my sin theta is minus 4 over 5. Then the second step was I used Pythagoras to determine my x my y and my r, which is really the heart of all this work. The last thing you have to do before you can continue with substitution is you have to look at your signs and you have to look at your restrictions. Now what do I mean by my signs? You see, if we were to take our Cartesian plane, when we have our Cartesian plane, we know that this x is positive, this y is positive, negative x, and negative y. We also know our following ratios. All right, let us look at our Cartesian plane and then link it to our ratios. Now, if you look at sin, sin is based on y over r. So I've got y. And then R we know is always positive. It doesn't matter where I am. R would be positive here. R would be positive in the second quadrant. R would be positive in the third quadrant. And R would be positive in the fourth quadrant. If I take Y over R, positive times positive will give me a positive. So what we noticed is that if I take any of these random ratios in the first quadrant, let's take sec, R, which is positive, divided by x which is positive would also give us positive. So what we say is that all the ratios in the first quadrant are positive. Right. But look at the second quadrant. If you have an, a y and an r, you would be positive. So if I have a y and an r in it, I would be positive. Because y divided by r, which means positive divided by positive, or r divided by y is positive divided by positive, would give me a positive. But if you have an x, then it would be negative. So cos would be a negative divided by a... So cos would be a negative 
divided by a positive which will be a negative. 10 would be a negative divided by a positive which would be a negative. So, the only ratio that is positive in the second quadrant is sin and its reciprocal cosec. Now let us take the third quadrant. The third quadrant x and y are both negative and r is positive. Now if I take any one that has an r it would be a negative. Negative x divided by a positive r will give us negative. A negative y divided by a positive r will give us a negative. The only way we can get a positive if I have both x and y because negative, negative give me a positive. Now the only ratio that has that is 10. So 10 So 10 and cot are the only ones that will be positive in the third quadrant. Now based on the same thing we now would do the last quadrant where x is positive and y is negative. Immediately we know if you have a y it's going to be negative. The only ones that don't have a y is cos and sec. So now what are we deciding? We are deciding that all ratios are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant only sin and cosec are positive. In the third quadrant only tan and cot is positive. In the fourth quadrant only cosec and sec is positive. Now a nice way to remember that is you can say all students take coffee. A lot of people or teachers teach it as caste but the reason I am not in favor of that is because then children start putting the C in the wrong place. They start putting the C in the first quadrant which for me is incorrect. So it's rather better to remember that A is your starting point first quadrant and then your second quadrant third quadrant and your fourth quadrant. Now all students take coffee. This would become relevant because when you use information later and I ask you okay so where is sin theta negative? Then you would tell me sin theta is negative in the third and the fourth quadrant. Where is cos positive? positive it is positive in the first quadrant and it is positive in the fourth quadrant. Where is tan positive? It is positive in the first quadrant and it is positive in the third quadrant. So this becomes relevant when you are doing work later when they start giving you a restriction. Right let's look at the following we've got that x is equal to plus or minus 3. We got the ratio alone we had used Pythagoras to get x, y and r. But how do I decide is my x positive or is my x negative? Now we look at the question. It says that sin is negative. Now sin is negative in which quadrant? It is negative in the third and in the fourth quadrant. When they give you these questions, they will give you a restriction. So let's put the following restriction. Theta lies between 0 and 270 degrees. Now in our Cartesian plane, in mathematics, we have 0, 90, 180, 270 and 360. Be careful, especially our geography learners, it is different from your geography. Our geography zero point is not where the maths is. So be careful. It is important that you realize that with maths we start on the horizontal plane on zero degrees. 
Now, where does 0 to 270 run? It starts from here, from the 0 line till the 270. So, I have a tick in my first quadrant, second quadrant and third quadrant. The only place that I have a double tick is in the third quadrant. Now, in the third quadrant, x is negative and y is negative. Now, how do we decide is x plus or minus 3? I am looking at the quadrant. I am definitely lying in the third quadrant, which means I am working in the third quadrant. Therefore, my x is going to equal to negative 3. So, we have got our ratio alone. We used our Pythagoras, but then we used our signs and our restrictions to decide which value of x will I take. Now, after I have done that, can I substitute? So, if I have cos squared minus tan squared, I know that cos is x over r and I know that tan is y over x. So, I look at my values, my x, my y and my r. My x is negative 3, my y is negative 4 and my r is 5. You can write it out like this or you could put it in a diagram. By grade 11, they would expect you to start using a diagram. Right, so in grade 11, they would expect you to use a diagram. You don't need to right now, but if you can do it and learn it, get used to it, it is better for you. Now, x is minus 3 over r, which is 5. Answer all squared. Minus 10 is negative 4. x is negative 3 all squared, which gives us an answer of Now, at this level, here they would specifically tell you you may not use a calculator. So, at these levels, they are going to be marking you to see if you substitute. But for your final answer, you don't need to show any calculation. Okay, so we know we must do get our ratio alone, use Pythagoras, use our signs and our restrictions, and then finally substitute. Thank you for watching.